All right, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current conditions. We're going to be taking a look at that really, really cold air that's going to be making its way in. Also, another Arctic blast expected about halfway through September. And, of course, there's a lot going on in the tropics as well, so we have a ton going on right now. Let's just take a look at our current radar imagery, and we do have a little bit going on here. Uh, as you can see, the western half of the nation is pretty much high and dry right now, so we don't see a whole lot going on out there. Um, so we're not going to be really focusing on anywhere out there, uh, but we do see some isolated and scattered activity happening throughout the north central and kind of the central central regions of the United States. So we see plenty happening in there, but it is isolated and scattered about. We'll take a look at some of those different areas. The most persistent precipitation we're seeing anywhere really is along the southeast and the Gulf Coast, which is usually how it is anyway. We'll start, I guess, in the north central United States. We do have a pocket of pretty moderate to heavy showers moving through into northern Minnesota there. We have some severe thunderstorms happening here in Iowa and really some thunderstorms happening throughout this entire corridor. So we'll be watching for those, but those do look really, really potent down there. Some severe thunderstorm warnings, like I said, coming through with those. So definitely, definitely worth noting there. We also have some severe thunderstorm warnings coming through in Oklahoma where there is just this band of thunderstorms taking place all the way from New Mexico through northern Texas into Oklahoma. Arkansas, Missouri, and southern Illinois there, where there's also a potent thunderstorm taking place there. And then for Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana here, we do have some showers and thunderstorms taking place up here as well that are also worth noting. Now, as we take a look at the Gulf Coast and the Southeast Coast here, we can see that there's plenty of storminess taking place throughout all of these states. We see states like Texas seeing mostly... I would say the most impacts here, Florida is going to come in second place or first place, depending on how you look at it. We do have just this pocket of these uh, tropical thunderstorms and showers moving onshore. At this point, this could cause some flooding as there's some pretty heavy pockets in there. We see more isolated areas here throughout Louisiana um, and potentially later on throughout Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle. But for now, just Louisiana. Uh, we see for Florida here. Along the east coast, we have some of these showers and thunderstorms making their way on shore. For the west coast of Florida, though, things are kind of moving away. So they're kind of moving from uh, east to west. So we're seeing these move offshore. So things near Tampa Bay and really in general along this entire western coast of Florida are looking pretty nice right now. So soak it up because it is going to be pretty nice, it appears, at least for this morning into maybe about noontime. Florida, there's no guarantees, so I can't say that it's going to be nice all day, but for the morning and the noontime, it looks pretty nice. Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina here. Along the coastline, we just have these thunderstorms and showers moving on shore here, so some general storminess. This could extend all the way into the Delmarva and coastal Virginia as well there. In general, as we see, there's a pocket kind of moving eastward here. This could eventually impact these regions. Outside of that, we're looking at pretty quiet conditions. So what we're going to do is move on, take a look at that modeled guidance. We'll take a look at the upcoming uh, huge cool down that we have coming up. It's going to really just set the uh, really just set the tone for September. We also have a bigger Arctic blast expected later on in September as well. We'll take a look at that one also. All right, now here we are taking a look at the upcoming temperature pattern. Let's just move this towards approximately. Uh, Wednesday, August 31st. This is our first Arctic blast that we've been talking about for a while. We see warmer temperatures out west. This is a positive PNA. This forces the cold temperatures to move around that air mass and move straight down into the eastern United States. And we can see by time we're reaching approximately September 1st here, which is going to be Thursday. We see this is fully engulfed into the eastern United States here. Uh, so we go from about 5 to 10 degrees above normal, like we've been seeing for most of the summer, to about 5 to 10 degrees below normal. It'll be about a 20 degree swing for most folks. Uh, so it is going to feel quite pleasant. It's going to feel colder than it even looks like on paper um, because of how above normal things have been. Now, as we move on over time, we can see that we do get some Arctic air masses moving in uh, for some of the northeastern United States, but mostly warm air taking over here by about September 5th. September 6th, I mean, look, the warm air actually moves up into the eastern United States by about the 7th, uh, 7th of September here, Wednesday. Uh, we see really warm temperatures. This is going to be hot, not even warm. I think that's an understatement there. Very, very hot temperatures there. Uh, but as time moves on, we see by September 9th here on Friday, we get another cool down. So at the very, very least, we're getting a flip-flop pattern. 
with a lot of very, very cold air masses trying to move through there. That's September 9th, like I mentioned. And here's uh, Saturday, September 10th. We have far below normal temperatures really, really working their way in. Warm air mass here overall. Uh, so this, this sort of forces the cold air to move around. It's not very classic, but it works, I guess, because we're, we're seeing that it works. We see cold temperatures here still by the 12th. Uh, but as time moves on, we get really, really far in the model range, kind of really far into the model run here. The range is pretty bad. Uh, we do see cold air for the west here, and then very, very warm air for the east later on on this model run, but this is very far out. So we'll take it with a grain of salt. Uh, regardless, we expect at least two to three uh, major cool downs. Arctic air mass is moving down from the Arctic regions down into the eastern United States. We see it multiple times over the next 15 days. According to the model run, the dates might not be perfect, but we do expect at least a flip-flop pattern where the Arctic air is able to make its way in from time to time. Now, as far as the upcoming storminess here, let's take a look at it. Things get really stormy here still for the Gulf Coast and the East Coast here. We'll also get to see multiple tropical cyclones move through. Here's that Arctic blast. Watch how uh, a low is able to just pull it down. Watch it pull this Arctic air mass down. Boom. We get a lot of snowfall there in kind of central Canada here with that low as well. As you can see, snow is getting very close to the United States, and there might even be snow in the United States on this model run that you guys will get to see. Actually, I know there is. So, spoiler alert, there is snow on this model run in the western United States. We see a lot of this storminess prevailing for these regions by the time we're reaching about the 4th of September. We see our tropical cyclone here, thankfully on this model, model run, staying out the sea Monday September 5th. I really want that to happen. Now, as we move on, we see some storminess start to move in here for about September 9th. We see a lot of these areas seeing some storminess. And really, once we see some snowfall, because I, I hinted at that, moving into the United States, we see by Monday, September 12th, we see the Cascades getting some snowfall here. You can hardly see it, but there is a little bit of blue there. Uh, and then for Tuesday here, September 13th, we actually get a Rocky Mountain snowstorm for high elevation regions. We do get some snowfall in there to end the model run. Now, as far as total precipitation goes, here we are. If you're anywhere in the whites, we're expecting practically no precipitation. Your grays would be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens would be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues would be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows would be an inch to two inches. Your reds would be two to five inches. And then your browns would be five to ten inches of precipitation. Also some blues in between Texas and Louisiana there. That would be ten inches plus over the next 15 days, which would be a whole lot. Now, for the first time in like two months, for the total snowfall, here we are. I know that excites some of you. I know that makes some of you not happy, but we have to take a look at it because there is some snowfall expected over the next 15 or so days here for the Cascades and the Rockies. If you're anywhere in the Whites, we expect no precipitation or no snowfall, obviously. Uh, now, in the grays, we expect about a dusting, if anything, of snowfall, potentially. It is very long range, so potentially. Uh, and then your blues would be two to five inches of snowfall, potentially. So, for the Rockies, the Cascades, these areas, also the purple, six to ten, and then pinks, ten to twenty. I just realized we have pinks there in the northern Cascades. Very interesting stuff. Within the next 15 days, we might be talking about snowfall, and then it's only going to get colder and colder and snowier and snowier from that point. So, it's almost here, guys. We're about a, we're about two days away from meteorological fall. Uh, and then from that point, we're three months away from meteorological winter. So we're getting close. Very, very close. Summer is coming to a close. Now, let's move on and talk about that five-day graphical tropic weather outlook and get an update over there. Now, here we are taking a look at it. We have three areas with code yellow. I'll just go over those real quickly. This one here in the Southern Caribbean has a 0% chance of development over the next two days. And then a... Uh, over the next five days, it has a 20% chance of development. Uh, so it's still a very, very low chance for that one. This one here in the very middle of the Atlantic has a 10% chance of development in the next 48 hours and a 10% chance over the next five days as well. So even lower chance with that one. And then the one here entering into our main development region has gone up a little bit. We have a 10% chance over the next 48 hours and then a 30% chance over the next five days. They all kind of start in these percentages usually, these lower percentages. Um, and then work their way up. So anything is possible with this one, but I think these two right here are red one, and then this one just now entering the main development region have by far the highest probability of development. And obviously the red one uh, here where we have a code red, 
50% chance of development over the next 48 hours, and then an 80% chance of development over the next five days definitely has gone up significantly. It really has exploded. Uh, this is not unusual for this time of year. Obviously, I had somebody comment yesterday like, oh, tropics exploding, that's kind of an overstatement. But when you go from absolutely no tropical development for an entire month, and then you jump to, you know, four tropical disturbances to track, it is absolutely an explosion in comparison to what we've been dealing with. So that's, that's basically what I meant. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We're going to track this daily. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to like the video if you did and leave a comment down below with your thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.